Back talking golf once again on Tee Off with Jan Stevenson. And Jan is on site at Valspar Innisbrook Resort. Uh, it's her uh, PGA Tour event in her backyard. So she takes advantage of that as best as possible. And uh, we look forward to uh, seeing what she did during this upcoming week. We're going to take a look at uh, some video. We'll put it on the channel. She'll be back again real soon, maybe even next week to talk about it. Uh, she'll be at Augusta National for the Masters. So <clears throat> we're looking forward to seeing what she can get captured there. Uh, but uh, we really have uh, a lot of exciting things happening on this channel and uh, can't wait for it to all uh, come to fruition. So uh, anyway, a couple of back-to-back -back signature events, Jared, uh, <clears throat> going both to Scotty Scheffler uh, as uh, uh, he just turned it on and proved right now why he is without a doubt uh, the best player in the world. And there's not even somebody, I, I, nobody's even close to being second. <clears throat> No, I mean the guy. The guy had a bad neck for, you know, <laughs> two like Friday and Saturday. It was clearly a problem. You could tell he, he said it was a problem. I think by Sunday he was closer to one hundred percent. Of course, he had the awesome round. Um, you know, con continues to, you know, continued to putt well enough. You know, not not a dominant putting performance, but well enough when you have the type of ball striking he does. The, the consistency is unbelievable with him. Like you know, when 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 is it, Tiger's got to be the last guy who had anything close to this level of consistency where just every single week Scheffler is in the top 10, top oh, five yeah. competing to win. Um, now, you know, he, he, he was awesome. I'd say the three guys who tied for second obviously all had their chances down the stretch to at least send it to a playoff. And, you know, Wyndham Clark came the closest with that brutal lip out. But um, you know, obviously credit, credit to Scheffler who, you know, what, again was, was the best player in that tournament from, from T to green. Yeah, you know, it was uh, – here's a really good handicapping tip for anybody out there. And and you might say – and you might have second-guessed yourself or, or maybe just didn't even realize it. And then it's it's over with and, okay, you'll get him next time. But always, when you have a player like Scheffler and you're getting – I don't care how far, how far he's back as long as he's within reasonable distance – Mm -hmm. You have to take advantage of the fact that he was 10 to one on Sunday. You have to, um, you know, we saw Rory do it earlier this year in Europe, uh, you know, and, and, and that was even an easier situation because it wasn't a PJ tour field. Um, and Scheffler had proven it at, he had, I think it was Bay Hill. Yeah. I think it was Bay Hill where we were going over some trends uh, and I, I'm, I'm pretty positive that the trend th that we had talked about regarding uh, come from behind players, uh, and he was like the only one in like a stretch that had actually came from behind. And mm -hmm. matter of fact, it was after the second round, the stat was uh, 14 of the last 16 winners at Bay Hill had started the weekend inside the top 10. <laughs> Scotty Scheffler was the last winner to start the weekend outside the top 11 since Tiger Woods in 2008. He was in 20th place, eight shots back. And that right there uh, should have been a tip-off that Scotty could do this, uh, especially with how well he played the week before, the fact that he said in the morning he felt better than he did the day before. And then, now look, he did need um, uh, the Eagle uh, uh, chip, mm -hmm. if you want to call it it's a, it's a long chip, uh, that was pretty uh, awesome. You got to have those things when you're putting together a final round like he did, uh, yep. and it all comes together. But that's why these players are great. But that's the tip uh, just any time uh, you get a, a great player and, and you're within reasonable distance, I'm not talking about you know 10 back, I'm talking about you're within like six shots, which is a you know, he was what five shots, I believe, back. Yeah. So yep. you, so you, that, that, again, I don't care what the history tells you. Just roll the dice, and uh, and sometimes you get lucky. So I got lucky with that, and I was happy about it um, because I have learned my lessons from from not pulling the trigger or not being cognizant like I should have been. That hey, wait a second, here's a great player. He's he's on the first leaderboard, and uh, yeah. and, and anything can happen. Yeah, I mean, Scheffler has just ascended beyond any type of trends we want to talk about. I mean, we talked about no one had ever won the, the players back-to-back -back year. Scheffler does it. You know, he gets yep. the two back-to-back -back wins coming off 
Bay Hill. He is not Scheffler is now four and a half to one to win the Masters in a few weeks. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Man, I I'm scared for all my other bets because it's man. It, I don't want to say it's tough to see him not winning, but like kind of is at this point. <laughs> like he's great. He's great at the course. He it seems to have figured out the putter, or at least it's not a detriment to his game. Um, now that said, I did I, I did make a, another uh, Masters ad during the players. I got. Um, Sahit Tagala at sixty-five to one for the Masters. Okay, it'll be just his, it'll be just his second appearance, which is you know kind of against trends. Usually, like True. to see more experience there. But he did come, I believe, it was ninth in his debut there last year, playing well. Um, I think I think we before have sort of compared him to Jordan Spieth in the way they play. You know, just a great great short game can get a little wild off the tee, and Spieth's obviously done well at Augusta. So Sahit Tagala is my. Uh, most recent masters bet yeah i i i i i think a couple of weeks ago i did clark and I'm trying to remember if i had any clark, clark is clark has never played the masters like he's he's going to be a popular bet and it, ma- it makes sense because it is a course where you want to be long but yeah not ne- never playing is. there is that's that's he, yeah i mean he, yeah it's his first appearance and what is it is it, is it fuzzy zeller is that the last that's a good uh, one yeah first, i think that's time. it yep Last player to win the Masters at, at their first, you know, first Masters. Yeah, I, I had I had put a futures money on Neiman. I got him early. Um, I got Ustays in really early, and then Clark, and then also of course Zalatoris. So yes, I now have I now have Xander, which you know I got him at thirty to one, but I have zero faith in that guy to actually you know cl- close the deal and win the Masters. But I do have Xander. At thirty, I have Zalatoris at forty-one, and I have uh, Tagala at sixty-five. Yeah, Xander. Uh, I mean, you just you, you can't have back-to-back bogeys coming down the stretch, playing the way that he had. He he and was. He, and then he had the he had the seven-footer for birdie on uh, seventeen. Couldn't and so that, yes, and that was not that difficult. And the fact that what was he had a stat of like not having a bogey for like I don't know how many rounds. And then mm-hmm. uh, to have whatever it was on the day. What did he have? Three bogeys on the day? Something like that? And, and Including those back-to-backs? Uh, I don't know if it was two or, right. or three. But, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> not good. Um, and and that's something that we talked about. And we keep talking about with Xander. We've talked about it with Cantlay. The longer it goes that you just haven't – again, it's something. He's the fifth-ranked player in the world right around that number. Right. But the guy has not won since 2022. Him or Cantley, and I'd they're just in better. And look, they're, 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 here's an interesting trend that I looked up with Xander, and we're going to talk about with this week's event too. Another trend, but on a positive trend. But this negative trend: Xander has never won a golf tournament after a first round lead. Never. So that's unusual for a really good player. But mm-hmm. and look, it's not like he hasn't won good events. He has. Uh, he's won some really good events, but there's something going on right now that he's having a hard time closing. And so it, it might be one of those deals that in order for him to win his next event, he's going to have to come from behind. And it's just, it's just tough from a betting perspective too, because the fact that he is in the mix and he's, you know, cashing these top five, top tens, you just don't get good odds. on him. I mean, look at his yeah. odds this week. He's in the single digits, which even in a you know weaker field, like I just can't imagine betting Xander at single digits, just what we've seen for the past you know year plus when he when he's in the mix. And uh, and you know what? Maybe the best thing is, like I said, the come from behind angle is you just wait until he's in a situation at an event, uh, and 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 I'm not talking about Saturday. I'm talking about Sunday, where and and and, and we don't want him chasing any. By the way, Scotty Scheffler, but. You know, have him in a good event, and he's not chasing any superstars, and he's like Scheffler was four or five back, and may, and maybe you're getting right. fifteen to one on a Sunday. That might be the best way of trying to take advantage of, of Xander Schauffele financially, because like you said, it's gonna be hard to make any money off of him, and it's really hard to put any money on him uh, in certain respects. Even though uh, we'll talk about uh, this week's event, which is a much more easier field for him. Um, and I'm sure he'd love to break the streak as soon as possible. Uh, that, that's not a good streak to have. Um, by the way, as far as futures, I did put uh, more money this week so far, just two. I did two on the U.S. Open. 
I did Brian Harmon, who's 50 to 1. Mm-hmm. Um, and I did Nick Taylor, who, by the way, Taylor. is oh, 125 to 1 at the U.S. Open. And I'm like, look, I haven't even looked at his U.S. Open trends, and I don't have to because we've talked about Nick yeah. Taylor being a much different player now than he ever has been. But the key is what's the one ingredient more than anything that you need to win at the U.S. Open? It's putting. And that man is steely-eyed with the putter. So yeah. I figured at 125 to 1, uh, he's playing the best golf he's ever played in his career right now. Yep. And I thought that that was a, a steal to, to try to take some uh, futures money on the U.S. Open. So, For sure, yeah. I mean, I, you know, he was obviously in the mix uh, last week. Just unfortunately didn't have it on Saturday, which which cost them. But um, he, he's finally getting respect on the odds board this week. He's kind of priced where I think he, yes. he, he, should, he be. should be. Yes, because it's yes. not a deep field. I mean, you really yep. have, let's see, we've got like five – Big names. Uh, Shoffley, Burns, JT, Spieth, and Young. Those are the big names. And then you have a, another group of quality players where Taylor is pretty close to. Finau, M, Harmon, and then Taylor's that next group. So, yeah. Um, by the way, we didn't have time last week because we had Jan on, but I wanted to give a shout-out to my boy, uh, Matteo Menacero, for his win, uh, <laughs> his first uh, European Tour win. I believe it was... 10 years, something like that. And uh, great to see because in the beginning of the season, we had our list of uh, long shot PG tour players. And uh, I gave a list of European tour players that I thought had a good chance of breaking through and getting a win this year. And Mateo was on the list. So that's one off the board. He was 150 Mm -hmm. to one when he won. Um, And and, and by the way, he was a former amateur number one. And this is a nice trend that we're going to talk about today because regarding our picks, we have a lot of picks of former number one U.S. amateurs, but Mateo was a former U.S. One, a number one amateur. Sandra Schauffele was a former number one U.S. amateur. Um, so, uh, yeah, shout out to Mateo. By the way, Shane Lowry's the favorite this week. They're playing over uh, – I forget where they're playing, but Lowry's playing this week. Uh, Paul Casey's actually playing this week at this event as well. Uh, mm. So it's on the European tour, the DP World Tour, um, because this is the last stretch. We've got uh, – because a lot of a lot of players are, have to decide what to do because some of them are playing a third straight week um, right. and it's skipping Texas altogether and then they go to the Masters. Um, but whoever's not playing this week, like Scheffler, I mean, I, I, are we are we are we going to guess that Scheffler is off to the Masters? It's, no, it's I would. I, I I don't. I wouldn't guess. I'd guess he's going to play Houston next. Oh, that's week. right. He's a Texas boy. He's a Texas So guy, he yeah. ain't skipping uh, yeah. both of them, that's for sure. I, yeah, he he, do, he usually doesn't play Valero the week before. So I, I would assume Scheffler will play next week. Okay. I know Rory, Rory's playing Valero, so he probably won't play next week either. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean the guy's not playing this week. I assume they're going to want to play one of the next two, right? Yeah, and, 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 and a lot depends on which players just either are wanting to play the week before the, the, the big event were players that just never played the week before uh, an event. Um, it makes it pretty easy for them. That's the decision that they're going to make. Yep. So uh, we'll see how that goes. And Houston Open, the scheduling has been different over the years, uh, but uh, it's now in the slot where it is. And um, we've got the back-to-back Texas events coming up just before the Masters. One more Florida event uh, this week at Innisbrook. And this is a very, very tough golf course. Mm-hmm. So it's interesting. You've got the PGA National, uh, which is normally a very tough golf course, it has been kind of uh, sort of like Bay Hill. You know, the the, the yep. scoring is starting to uh, uh, go down. Um, even last even last week, I mean, that was yeah. you know e- easy. And I, some some of it's the wind, but you know, or you know, lack of wind. But um, I didn't like the the long rough around seventeen green. You know, a lot, a lot of those balls that were spinning back would have gone in the water in, in previous years, but they, they grew up the rough so long around the green that the, you know, it was, it was kind of catching those balls before they could find the water. Now, it's interesting that Sam Burns is like one of the only players that just uh, lit up Valspar in his brook because mm-hmm. he was 17 under par in his back-to-back wins in 21 and 22. 
But the the if you just eliminate those two years, the average winning score is like around 10, 9 under par. Even last year was 10 under par. So I'm not sure exactly yeah. what happened those two years that yeah. Sam Burns, because one of the years it was a playoff. It wasn't like he blitzed the field and, and easily, you know, uh, won by five strokes. He went to a playoff. But, yeah, this is normally a very tough golf course. So... Yeah, I don't remember for sure, but I'm assuming a lot of it is wind or lack of wind. You know, I think it was probably not very windy those Burns years. I'm looking at the the forecast now. Friday and Saturday look very windy. Friday okay. you're looking at like like 20 mile per hour sustained winds with gusts up to like 39 miles per hour. Oh. Saturday is about the same, maybe a little less. Even Sunday's like you know 15 to 20 miles per hour. So anything on Thursday um, or Friday with the tee times. Yeah. Um. Not really. Like thir- Thursday's calm throughout the day. Friday's yeah. windy throughout the day. So as of now, okay. I don't see any edge to the tee times. Thursday's okay. going to be the day to score, and then it's going to kind of be hang on, hang on after that. All right. So, yeah, because that's the one thing we haven't seen yet this year is yeah. when, the, when, when we've seen weather, we haven't seen it affect a particular group of you know, players you know, based on tee times. So we haven't seen yep. that yet. So it doesn't yep. mean it's coming. It usually does at some point, but so far uh, we haven't had to worry about that. Um, all right. So uh, let's get your stats up up, uh, and throw in. Let's see. Where are the stats? Here they are. Okay. So there are the stats, the top 10 in course history over the last five years. Big surprise with Sam Burns on top. And the top 10 on par threes, 200 to 225 yards over the last 12 months. So talk a little bit about uh, those stats. Yeah, top 10 in course history, you find most of those big names you were talking about at the top of the odds board on this list. Burns at one, Justin Thomas at three, Spieth is at five, Sungjae comes in at eight, Xander comes in at 10. So all, all these uh, bigger names have had some success at this course, which is interesting. The par, the par threes, um, this is an interesting course in that there are five par threes here. Um, and, and all five of them land in this bucket, give or take like five yards. I think one of them is like 195. I think the longest one's like 230. But for the most part, they're you know in this 200 to 225 yard range. And again, there's five of them. Um, so that, that that was definitely something I huh. looked at this week. Could kind of be a, a difference if you're you know deciding between two guys that you, you you like. If one of them is strong on these longer par threes, that might be the guy to lean towards this week. And interesting that there's only one. A major player on that list and that's Brian Harmon mm-hmm. and uh, you know I, I kind of like Harmon this week I just I, yeah. uh, but I just my the way I'm doing my picks this week um, and we're going to go into the trends now uh, it's going to be a little bit different I can see you're doing the same thing um, so let's I'll tell you what I'm, I'm going to pop up the picks so there they are there's my eight picks Jared has six so those are our picks, even though my last four picks were all $5 long shots. So let's uh, go over some trends because these are some interesting trends uh, for Innisbrook. Innisbrook has been the site for Valspar uh, every year, 22 events. They've had two cancellations. So uh, the first event was back in uh, 2000. And uh, the one that stuck out, a couple stuck out to me. Um Five of the of the last ten first time winners ranked outside the top ninety. Okay, that includes uh, one hundred and fifty third and two hundred and fifth. So uh, that means that long shots can win here, um, and maybe we get back to the long shots winning. Who knows? Uh, Scotty <laughs> Scheffler, that's one man. We'll see if uh, someone else, like Xander Schauffele, or someone else, can uh, keep that uh, going. Okay, the others that are interesting: sixteen of eighteen all time. First-time winners made four appearances or less. Uh, and nine of the last 14 first-time winners made three appearances or less. So uh, that's interesting. Um, and it's also interesting that, get this, only one first-time winner, and we're not including, of course, the very first one, mm-hmm. only one first-time winner has scored a previous top five here. And the last five first-time winners failed to score a previous top 10, 
with four of them failing to score a previous top 25. And it, it, when, when you go over the, 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 the board, it's not a surprise because I'm going over the board this week and I'm going, there's a lot of players who just have been complete hit or misses here. And there's like some players just have not had yeah. any success here where you go, oh, it's got to be this guy or it's got to be that guy. I mean, besides Sam Burns and his obvious wins, um, mm-hmm. it's just, it, it's just one of those events where you just, it, you're not going to go find somebody that has a yeah. great history here and that it means something correlating to them winning this week. So that again, yep. opens it up for more long shots. Yeah. And I feel like we've said that for most of these Florida courses that a lot of these guys have like checkered course histories. And I, I really think it's because of all the water in play in these courses that, you hit like two bad shots, you can miss a cut and then your yep. course history looks a lot worse. So yeah, I, I didn't weigh course history too heavily this week. I think if anything, looking at how these guys perform on other courses like in this brook where that it's, 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 it's one of those positional courses, right? It's, it's tree line. It's pretty tight. It's going to be a lot of holes where guys are hitting less than driver long approach shots. So like, you know, looking at other courses like that, you know, like a Harbor town comes to mind as a similar type of course like that. That's probably more, useful this week because they're handicapping this event than then looking at course history a uh, couple quick uh, other quick ones before we move on only two all-time winners uh one here in their uh, first appearance um so uh just two and uh, that's it's probably about right it's about 10 percent uh roughly and six of the all-time winners made this their maiden pj tour win uh including four of the last eight so half the winners here in the last eight have made this their maiden PGA Tour win. Matter of fact, eight of the last ten first-time winners were making this either their first or second PGA Tour win. Another indication that we might see some long shots this week. So, um, all right, let's get to it. And uh, let me pop up uh, the odds here to see how it are. Because look, I'm just gonna I'm, I'm gonna give you a reason for my strategy, and I. And, of course, we're going to go over one and dones. Um, now, I can't take – if I wanted to, and I'm not sure. Maybe I would. I'm not sure because, again, Xander Schauffele, uh, we don't know about whether or not mentally he's going to be able to win a big event this year. So you might have a decision to make whether or not mm-hmm. you know you think this is a week to take him because I'm going to tell you right now if I, I, I don't have him because I used him up already – but I'm telling you right now, if I did have him, I would seriously consider taking him uh, mm-hmm. to get a W on board. Um, he is right now at seven to one. Uh, let's see if I can I'll pop it up right here so everybody can see it. There it is, seven to one. There's Safra and all, all the other favorites there. Okay, um, but here, okay, this is the reason why I did put him on my picks this week. I did some research on Shafle. He only made one appearance here. That was 2022. He finished 12th. We know how hot he is. There's there's nobody like uh, the, the the player closest to Scheffler right now without winning is Shoffley regarding yep. how well he's playing. Five yep. top tens and seven this year. Three top fives and of course the runner up uh, last week. Okay, six of Xander Shoffley's seven uh, seven wins, and this includes the Olympic win. So six of his seven uh, professional wins were were made either on his first. Or second appearance. Hmm, how, interesting. How, how crazy is that? Yeah. Now, maybe that's why he lost players because that was the sixth <laughs> appearance. So that is very interesting that he's a guy that can come to a golf course first time, second time win. And he's done it just about every time that it just, I think travelers might've been the only uh, event that he won that he was at maybe his fifth appearance or something like that. Everything else that he's won was a first or second appearance. So oh. that in part with the fact that I do believe normally I would say, you know what? Cause I am, I'm skipping all the other the favorites. Normally I'd be like, I'm, I'm, I'm skipping them all. And yeah, he's too, way too low. He's seven to one. Why am I going to take him? He hasn't won since 2022, but I, I, that, and also the fact that I have to believe that, it's now eating him. I got to win. I got to get a win. I got to get this, this whatever this is, off. And, and I got some big events coming up. I got the Masters, and I got the big event season coming with the Majors. 
I got to win before I get to those events. I got to get this this winning feeling going again. So mm -hmm. I think it is important for him. Unlike maybe some of these other players that are just kind of third in a row, maybe they're resting, maybe they're preparing for the Masters. I do think that he's going to be dialed in this week. Yeah, you know, it's a, a there's some good points you make. I'm I'm not going to get to Xander at seven to one. I do have him still available for one and done, and I honestly was not considering him because just generally how I play one and done is I want to use these high end players in fields with um, or in tournaments with the, the bigger prize pools. Um, but I don't know. I think I think Xander's on my list to consider now because he is seven to one, and he's not going to be seven to one for any other tournament he plays this year. It's probably is his best you know percentage chance to win the tournament. Yeah, it's a lower prize pool, but if he, and I also don't think he's going to be very popular in one and done either. True. Uh, I think there'll be at least a couple players that are more popular. So that, yeah, it's good good points you make, and I am now going to consider using Xander in one and done. Uh, and then because if you, here's the interesting thing, you have. Uh, Paul Casey winning and then defending with a win. Mm -hmm. Then you have Sam Burns yep. winning and defending with a win. So Taylor Moore has got pressure on him this week because he <laughs> won last year. He's trying to be the, the third straight uh, champion of this event that has successfully defended the title. Um, but you take a look at the other players on the field, and, and one of them is Burns. He is the second go at it, uh, for second odds at 12 to 1. But it, it's just hard to win three out of four. I will say this, that if you are with Burns, if you are thinking about one and done and you have them, this is a yeah. pretty good place to do it. I know you want him to win because the money's low. And even if he finishes in the top five, which he, which you would think you probably had a good chance to do it at this golf course, you're still not making a lot of money. So that's the thing you have to weigh against. So mm -hmm. uh, I like if I had already, you know, if I'm in a one and done contest and I've already got like two or three wins and I'm yes. like at near the top, I'm probably taking Sam Burns. I'm going to do the, the easy way out and just, because uh, yeah. again, I, anything can happen at this event, but why not just go with Sam Burns? Because nobody has the resume at this golf course that Sam Burns does. Right. Yeah. I'm with you. I think Burns is, is the choice for front runners and one and done's at this point. I think he, feels like you know one of the safer plays um i i and i i am considering burns he's one of the two guys that kind of came into this considering i'm going to add xander to the list now but um i'm considering burns because I, I i you know he's a good player he's not a great player so i like him at this level of event plus i like sam burns in florida and this is our last event in florida for the year so if you want to use him in florida this is your, your last chance he, he is going to be popular though he he might be the most popular one and done play this week yeah, that's true. Matter of fact, if uh, we take a look, the only thing that I would, I'm concerned about is he is trending in the wrong direction. And he started that on Sunday at Bay Hill <laughs> yeah. Yeah. when he, what would he have, what do you have, like a 77 or something like that? When he was yep. in contention, everything was going great, and he just completely uh, flopped, and he hasn't really gotten his game back since. So let me just quickly take a look. So he, he won last in 2022. So I want to see what his trend line was coming in. Um, it was okay. He had a 26th at Players and a 9th at Bay Hill. Uh, and in 2021, uh, the first time he won, uh, yeah, he had three missed cuts and then a 39th at RBC Heritage. Then he had the win. So um, mm -hmm. he wasn't trending backwards like he is right now. But uh, look, the fact is... You know, really class player. Like you said, it's a Florida course for him, and he's just awesome on the course. So, yeah, uh, no, I mean, you're right about the trends. His his um, ball striking numbers, the you know off the tee and approach, really has not been great the last two weeks. So that's that's concerning. Yeah, with the water, no question. And then mm -hmm. you have Justin Thomas at 14 and Spieth at 16. And um, uh, where are we? So Thomas, uh, yeah, he there's. Jan actually said that uh, when she was out there yesterday, she had she was playing yesterday on the course. Um, there was some uh, I forget what she was there for, but anyway, uh, she said she saw JT there. She was he was practicing, which is unusual on a Monday. Uh, she, mm -hmm. He had his golf instructor out there, so uh, look, he missed the cut, so he had the extra time, and he's definitely using it. Uh, we've talked about this. JT's never won an event on his third consecutive week of action. So keep that in mind. And he's missed two of his last three cuts. So all of a sudden, 
that hot start he's gotten off to is in jeopardy. This is a big event for him. If he misses yeah. the cut this week, that's bad. Now, all of a sudden, he's kind of back where he was last year. So he really needs a good top 10 showing this week. Yeah, do, do not take my advice when it comes to Justin Thomas because I've been invested in him twice so far this year, and it's the two weeks he missed the cut at Genesis and the players. Um, so he's he's killing me. Um, I know that feeling. And I could I could see myself getting back on him for the Masters, honestly. I've bet him at the Masters a lot, and I, I still think it's a tournament he'll win eventually. Um, now, I will say last week was super frustrating because through two rounds, you know, when he missed the cut, he was, I think, it, like he was sixth in the field in strokes gain approach through two rounds. So the irons were awesome. The driver was not good enough. The putting was horrible, which you know has been an issue for Thomas for a while now. So I, I, I still don't think he's far off. Again, the irons were awesome last week. Um, so I, I still think he's he's close. I would not be shocked if he won this week, as of course he's played well at in the past. Um, but yeah, he's he's not he, he's not for me as a bet this week at that number. I do think. If you if you still have him in one and done, he's worth considering. I think yeah. he'll probably be pretty low owned, but just because he's coming off the miscut. Yeah, because again, he actually has done pretty well here compared to right. other players in his last yeah. three years, three top fifteens, and a third place finish. So that's pretty good. Five top twenties in his career out of six. So that's a good run for JT. He seems to like the golf course. Jordan, who's now sixteen to one, by the way. Uh, Jordan's kind of like the same way. I don't know what's going on with Jordan right now. Um, you know, he got off to a good start. It looked like this could be a good good year for him, and it's all falling apart. Uh, just one top ten in his last five. Missed the cut last week. Uh, just like JT, though, he's five top ten, five top twenties out of six. So this has been a good golf course for him. He won it back in 2015. He was third last year, but I just don't like the way he's playing right now. Nope, me either. And I know he played well here last year. It just doesn't seem like the type of course he would be good at. I don't trust his driving accuracy on, on such a tight tree line course like this. So definitely not not, not a speed week for me. Okay, we're going to now scroll down here with the odds where we pick up. There you've got Harmon uh, through Straka. So let me see. Is there anybody else? Yeah, well, that's a good way to uh, – we'll, we'll, we'll go through this list now. Yeah, Harmon, I, I think this is a good week to take Harmon because uh, I, I can make excuses for the other contenders that are in his uh, zone, even Burns and JT, because he is trending beautifully coming off the runner-up. Uh, I even um, uh, thought last week he was a pretty decent play for his odds. Uh Three top 25s out of nine is nothing special, but that's par for the course here. Um, yep. One top five in his career, but he's missed the cut six times <laughs> in nine appearances. So you do – that's the thing that keeps me from going, yeah, you know what? Maybe he's a good one-and-done option this week. Harmon <laughs> showed by winning the Open Championship last year – that he actually could be a sneaky sleeper in a major for one and done. So I, I'm definitely holding on to Harmon for something this year. Okay. I don't know what it is, but I'm gonna I'm gonna especially if he plays like this. Um, but this week, yeah, I, I just uh, that's I, I, look at twenty to one, which he is right now. I don't think he's a bad idea if you want to throw some yeah. money on him because I'm going to. But um, yeah, I, I don't know if I would uh, do one and done though. I think there are better options for him down the line. So Harmon's the guy I'm leaning towards, actually, for one and done this week. Um, I, I, I don't think I would get to him in a major. I mean, you make a, he obviously won one last year, so he's not a bad play in these majors. I think I'll end up using, you know, just guys higher in the world rankings in majors. The, the course history is scary here, although you said, you know, a few minutes ago that course history doesn't matter a no, whole it doesn't. lot here. Um, and I, I just want to ride the hot form with Harmon. Sure. You know, it, even if you look at when he won the Open last year, I mean, it didn't come out of nowhere. He had played three excellent tournaments in a row before that win. So, you know, I think he is kind of a form player. Good course for him. You know, not the longest course, more of an accuracy type course. That's the type of player he is. Um, you know, la last week, Harmon gained, gained nine strokes on approach, second best strokes gained approach tournament of his entire career. Wow. So this this guy this guy is hot. Um, I'm just going to, I think, hope. He rides the form for one more week, and he, he's who I'm leaning towards for one and done. But, again, I, I, you know, Burns and, and Xander are also considerations for me. Well, 
the you answered it right there. See, for me, I, I'm I want to hold them for a big one because that's what I'm thinking I might be able to because because if you take them for a big one, chances are, and you win that week, you're going to be in good position because not many other people are going to take them in a yes. big one. But yep. if, like you said, if you're not planning on doing that, then yeah, this is a great week to take them one one and done. Now, yeah, and I do think Harmon will be pretty popular this week for one and done. I don't think he's going to you know fly under the radar. Um, but I'm okay, I'm okay with that. That's true. Uh, coming off, uh, you know, you know, everybody was glued into what happened last week, to, right. to, to seeing how hot he is, and uh, yeah, and they remember he won the Open Championship, and it's a weaker field, so I can definitely see this being a good week, um, as far as well, a week uh, where he's going to be popular at one and done. Uh, Cam Young, uh, Finau, and M. Um, I, I don't, I don't like any of these guys this week. Still don't like the way yeah. Finau is going. Just one top five uh, since the Mexico win. I keep saying that uh, because, uh, you know, and it's interesting because he's missed a cut here three times and mm-hmm. for a combined 19 over par. He made the cut once. He finished fifth, 11 under par. That's mm-hmm. Innisbrook. Uh, meanwhile, yeah. M, no top 15s in his last eight. He did finish fourth here in 2019, 29th and 21. So that's that's good course uh, history, but he is not on his game right now. And, uh, and then lastly, young, I just don't see this being a good course for young at all. Um, so I just, I can't, and it's trending in the wrong direction. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you on cam young. Cause like his distance off the tee is kind of negated here. He did play really well. It was either last year or two years ago at Harbor town, which again, I think is a, a similar course to this and that it's, you know, shorter position. Also like, not that cam young can't play well here, Again, we've talked about Cam Young, his inability to, to win these tournaments when he's at a number like that. I'd rather bet Cam Young at 50 to 1 at a major or a signature event you know, than bet him at you know, 20, 22 to 1 in a weaker field. It's just a, I don't trust his ability to close at this point. Um, Sung Jay and Fina were guys I briefly considered as bets. Sung Jay was bad for really the first, what, two months of the season up until the Honda, the Honda or the, the, the Cognizant. Um, the last two weeks, though, he's kind of started to turn around, you know, 18th and API, 31st at players. The ball striking numbers have been better. So I do think Sungjae is figuring something out. Um, not sure he's quite there yet, ready to win. Finau's ball striking has been awesome all year. We, we've talked about it. He made some changes with the putter last week and actually gained 1.3 strokes putting at the players. So I don't know, maybe if he's figured something out and the ball striking stays hot. Um, yeah, we'll keep an eye yeah. on that. Yeah, I mean – among among those three, Fina would be the, the my favorite bet of them. Um, but, I, but I just didn't quite get there this week. All right. Uh, next up, we have Minwoo Lee at thirty, Taylor Hadwin, the two Canadians at thirty five to one, Bradley and Straka at thirty five to one. So out of that group, uh, big surprise, Taylor would be the way that I would go, um, because again, he's, he's he's playing better than he ever has. Uh, yep. Uh, he was in contention, as you mentioned, until uh, sat until uh, third round he, he imploded. But um, the fact that he was there after a couple of rounds is another positive sign. Uh, three top twenty fives out of eight. Tenth last year was his best showing at this golf uh, on this golf course. Um, Minwoo Lee's never played here, and he's trending the wrong way. So um, I don't really like that. Uh, meanwhile, Bradley also his game seems to be off. Uh, he mm-hmm. hasn't looked good lately, and um, he was runner-up here in 2021, but he's missed four right. out of seven cuts, and uh, the last one being Hadwin, who does have three top 15s and a win. He won in 2017 here, um, but he's also missed four out of eight cuts overall. Uh, excuse me, he's missed, uh, yeah, four out of eight cuts overall, including last year, but uh, he has won, and, and that does mean something. Um, and in his last five events, though, he just hasn't played all that well. He does have a top five, but other than that, uh, his game is also off. Yeah, Minwoo, I would, I would cross off my list. I don't like him on a course like this that, that's so tight. Um, the, the other three, um, I wouldn't fault you for betting. I think there's arguments for all of them. I think they're all kind of fairly priced. Like Again, I think Nick Taylor is finally priced where he should be. At thirty-five to one, you know, with with Keegan Bradley and with Adam Hadman, that's kind of where he belongs. Um, so, I, Keegan Keegan, I looked at because he does have the, you know, some some spike performances at this course. Um, 
but like you said, just not not playing quite well enough. I don't think he, he's ready to win at this point. And by the way, Straka is trending in the right direction, but he's just played here once, um, which actually uh, trend wise is a good thing. Uh, that was forty sixth in two thousand and nineteen. Okay, now we're gonna go to the next group. Uh, let's uh, move on down. Um, matter of fact, while I'm doing this, let's see here. Let me get this set up here too. Where am I? Uh, there they are, the odds. Okay. Uh, so let me come back to. There they are. Okay. So um, yeah, I'm at Mitchell, uh, Gim, Uh Let's stop there uh, because uh, my my man over here. As you know, because we've already shown you the picks, uh, my man uh, has uh, all three of these players at 40 to 1. And uh, yeah, Bazunu is not down to 40, but we have him at 45. So, But they're all at 40. And I was seriously considering... Matter of fact, I definitely like Gim. Um, and I, w I might have taken Bazunu as well. So I like both of those picks. Uh, I want. Let's start. And by the way, this is another reference towards a uh, former U.S. Uh, number one amateur, uh, which Doug Kim uh, has been. Uh, you, you've mentioned him before. You took him, I think, once or twice last year, I believe. Yep. And he is now definitely. He better be on your radar now, um, because he's he's down to forty to one. He started off at sixty to one. It's showing you right there that uh, people are taking notice. In his yep. last five events, they're all top 20s. That is a serious run uh, for a young player like Gim. He was 27th last year, so he did make one out of two cuts, and he's got that perfect like resume for this golf course. You know, he's never won. You know, he doesn't have any great history here. Decent <laughs> history, nothing great. You know, he's 118th in the world, and more importantly, he's red hot. So I, I think he's a great pick this week. Yeah, I actually got him at 80 to 1 first thing Monday morning. So I can't say I, I love seeing him, you know, down to 40 now. But I, I again, like you said, I, I, he's, he's my favorite bet of the week. Just he's, he's playing by far the best golf of his career. Like you said, the five straight top 16s. He is second in this field in strokes gain total over the last three months. Um, yeah, he, and he's, he's doing it with the ball striking. You know, he has gained off the tee in five straight. He has gained on approach in five straight. And even the putting has been good. And that's, generally been the problem with Doug, Doug Gim is he's not a great putter, but he has been, um, especially these last few weeks, you know, on these Florida courses, which I like. Um, so I, he, he's, he's ready to win. Um, and I think again, 40 to one is, is still good enough Or even if I hadn't bet it at 80, I'd still pull the trigger on game at 40 to one. Yeah. That's awesome. If you, uh, if you hit him this week with that 80, matter of fact, um, I made, uh, two moves this week on my fantasy team. I almost picked him up. Yep. And he's 118th in the world. But that's how confident I am in this run, that it's just not a run. That this could be the beginning of the fact that, you know, we're going to probably all second guess the fact that we didn't pick him up on our fantasy team uh, before. So, Gim, um, good play this week. And then you have Bazoon Hoot, um, yep. who, even though he only played here once, he was two under par uh, in 2022. So, that's good. Um, but he's trending in the right direction, so we like that. He was a very solid 13th at players last week. Yeah, 13th at players gaining seven strokes on approach, which I'm looking right now. That's his best strokes gain approach tournament ever, at least on the PGA Tour. Um, he is, is um, fifth in this field in strokes gain total over the last three months, so he's just playing good golf. I know we talked about the new filter on Fantasy National last week looking at just Florida courses. If you look at that for this field this week, he is 17th best in this field, so we've done well in Florida. Um, had the you know air quotes win already at yeah. Amex, where he got the first place. Well, that's it. That, that's win. cash check. That's cash of the check. <laughs> cash, yes. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think he's uh, a candidate to actually pick up a real win this yeah. week. And then Mitchell, uh, your other pick, uh, Mitchell yep. has played here twice. 11th in 2017 is his best performance. Uh, didn't play as well last week, but I w was coming into players uh, on a nice little run to start the season. So why do you like yeah. him this week? Yeah, Mitchell lost six strokes putting last week at players. That that was his problem. Um, the ball striking has just been super consistent all season. He has Mitchell has gained strokes off the tee every single tournament he's played this season. 
He's gained strokes on approach in four straight, five of the last six. His only PGA Tour win came at Honda, you know, another Florida course. So I kind of like that. Um, I, I just think 40 to one's a pretty good number for, for Keith Mitchell in this field. All right. And now we're going to move on to the next uh, wave. And there they are from Rye to the defending champ, Taylor Moore. Okay. So uh, out of this group, um, we have some picks. Uh, we, we both uh, have some players on board. So I, I'm, I'm going to start off, first of all, um, with my pick in this group, and that is my second pick overall behind Xander Schauffele. So he's kind of like – he would have been my top pick if I didn't go with, with Schauffele, and that is uh, Maverick McNeely. So uh, McNeely is sitting there still at 55-1. to 1. Uh, I liked him a few weeks ago. Still like him. I almost picked him up on my fantasy team a few times this year. So, uh, but I also think he fits the profile. He's 99th in the world. He's never won a PG Tour event. He played here mm-hmm. just once, 36th last year. Uh, and then he's made six straight cuts, three top 15s out of four, two top 10s, including a very solid ninth last week at the players. And McNeely just seems to be one of these uh, one of these players who is is better at the tougher golf courses. You know, we see him in these major events. He's popped up before. And now, you know, we're seeing that again uh, with uh, his performance last week. So the tough of the, the toughness of the golf course is not going to affect Maverick McNeely at all. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think he's a good play this week. I mean, he was a guy that seemed like a promising youngster then had the injury issues for yep. most last year. He's, he's finally healthy. I don't know if you caught his walk and talk. Um, during the players on Saturday was, was pretty good. Those walk and talks are awesome. I'm so glad they added those and they, they do them every week now. And then the other player here is uh, to reference is one of your picks, Lucas Glover, who is uh, right now down to 55 to one. Uh, but uh, Lucas, you know, look, he, he got really hot last year, incredibly hot uh, right around playoff time. It was uh, really something how that happened. So now he's kind <laughs> of uh, back to being Lucas Glover. But he's had a decent history here. Six top 25s overall. Uh, but he's played here a lot. Uh, as a matter mm-hmm. of fact, I think he's played here maybe more than anybody else that's in the field. Um, 18 appearances here. Just one <laughs> top five. Uh, but anything's possible here. You could all put it together in one in one week. Why do you like him? Yeah, like you said, this is a guy that won two PGA Tour tournaments like eight months ago or whatever. Um, he hasn't had any like spike performances so far this year, but he, he's really playing solid golf. If you look at the ball striking stuff, like he hasn't, he hasn't had a good putting week really, really all year. He has not had a good putting week all year. That's why he hasn't you know really done better than what uh, 30th or I guess 29th is his best finish this, this year. But the ball striking has still been good. Like you said, he's plenty experienced here. And, you know, he, again, he, he won twice less than a year ago. So I'll take my chances at this number in, in this type of field. That's true. He is. Uh, I mean, again, the number has come down from 90, but um, it's still uh, uh, a good number. And then you have the two uh, players that went uh, head to head last year. Adam Shank is 60. Taylor Moore, the defending champ, is 65 to 1. So, uh, again, Moore's trying to do uh, do something crazy because uh, that would just be – I must I must say, if he gets off to a good start, I might actually put some money on him. If I still if I can get – I don't care if, if I'm getting halfway decent hedge money because that yeah. would just freak me out if he gets off to a good start. <laughs> um, but, anyway, no top 20s this year. So, that's uh, – th- didn't expect that. Thought Taylor Moore was going to have a nice year this year. But, so far, mm-hmm. hasn't happened. Maybe this is going to be something to get him going. Um, and then Shank, of course, was runner-up. He also has another top 20 uh, out of his five appearances here, coming off uh, you know a top, uh, a top 20 last week at Players, which isn't bad. Yeah. Yeah, Shank, Shank was red hot around this time last year. I remember betting him a few times because he was playing so well. Um, not, not playing as well coming into this event this year. And Taylor Moore, I mean, he's a guy who, when I mean, he does well, it's because of the putter. He can have, you know, excellent putting weeks just hasn't really had one of those all year so far which kind of explains why he's been pretty underwhelming okay uh, the next group from todd to victor perez and victor perez is actually like rogers a couple of my picks this week so you take a look at perez i really love the way he's trending and uh, look the, the way i feel if pavon can win on the pj tour so can perez so i think perez has got talent enough to do that 
Uh, he's coming off a third at Puerto Rico. He was 45th last year uh, at this event. You're getting him at a big number. Um, and uh, Patrick Rogers is one of those players that I, I, I mentioned before that I thought could break through with a win this year. And so um, not necessarily saying that this is like a great week for him, but the field uh, is uh, definitely yeah. uh, beatable. And he's played here six times. He's missed four cuts, but he was 36 last year, which was his best showing. And he has five top 25s in eight events this year, including two top 10s. So he is playing well this year, but another player that's just way overdue for a win. Yeah, I mean, Rogers is someone I'll just let beat me if he wins because yeah. I've seen that guy in contention too many times and it doesn't end well for him. Perez is a good call. I hadn't really looked at him. Um, you, you, you said he finished uh, third in Puerto Rico? Yep. Yeah, I mean, even because I mean, he finished uh, 16th at the Cognizant. The yep. ball striking was good. You know, 52nd in Mexico, but that was just a bad putting week. The ball striking was solid there too. Um, so don't know a ton about these guys that you know kind of split their time between the pga and and dp but um 80 to 1 seems like a pretty good number for him considering how he's played these last few events yeah victor uh definitely one of these players uh over in um the dp tour that uh had you know he kind of did what he needed to do Mm -hmm. and it was time for him to move on to the u.s and he was definitely uh willing and, and capable because uh, if you take a look overall at what he did over there uh he had uh from 2022 he had two wins um including a big win at the abu dhabi hsbc that was uh, last year um and uh there were a lot of big names in that event uh that was a big one you know in fact he had a really good showing on on uh sunday uh he shot a 66 and uh, captured that event. So he definitely knows how to win. All right. Uh, And then on this group, uh, by the way, Taylor Montgomery had a very strong showing last week, but he's been really quiet for the most part this year. Still hasn't kicked it in. Um, So we need more than just one week. Uh, Hey, look, if he shows up this week, he's never played here before and does well, then maybe we'll, we'll, we'll keep an eye on him for the next couple of weeks. Yeah, Montgomery has turned back into Taylor Montgomery, where it's just all putting. Um, there, I, I bet him at the Amex. I remember because in the, at the Sony Open, he had an awesome approach week. So I was like, oh, maybe he, he you know, kind of figured out the irons, and if he can pair good iron play with the putting, because he's always an excellent putter, then he could be onto something. But I'm just looking through his results, and like it's just, it's just all putting, and I don't, I don't bet on guys like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's. Definitely, uh, I mean, that's if you take a look at like the top players, uh, we we've been down that road before with you know the Will Zalatoris's of the world. So if if it's not if those guys have a hard time winning, then you can imagine <laughs> uh, the likes yeah. of uh, players at this level. Okay, so next group, next uh, group here, Daniel Berger, uh, eighty to one, um, and then we start getting into the hundred to one shots. Uh, Burger is on your list. So you got Burger, and a matter of fact, uh, I have two players on this list, Kevin Yu and mm-hmm. Sam Ryder. So we have three on this list. We'll start with Burger, who so far has been a little quiet this year, um, missing cuts three out of five in the last two. Matter of fact, he's missed two out of three cuts here, but he did have an 11th place finish in 2016. So why are you going with Burger this week? Yeah, I mean, this, this one's honestly mostly just like a dice roll on Berger at 80 to 1, where I feel like, you know, if he's healthy and back in form, he would be a top 10 player. True. In this I, now, I, I don't think he is. There's really nothing that points to him being there yet. Although I will say, he, I think he's hitting it better than the finishes suggest. He actually lost five strokes putting when he missed the cut at the Cognizant Classic. He actually gained strokes off the tee and on approach. Just had okay. a really bad putting week. So I think he's, again, I don't think he's back but I think he's closer than it might appear. And he's also a guy I like playing on Florida courses. You know, he's, he's a Florida state guy, putts well in Bermuda. So, you know, 80 to one burger. This, this one's really just kind of a gamble. You know, maybe, maybe he finds it this week. All right. And then uh, Kevin, Yu uh, is uh, on the list. Matter of fact, Kevin, you, um, Kevin, you is actually, he, he went to Arizona state, uh, where John Rahm was. John Rahm, of course, won all sorts of uh, records there. 
But Kevin, you had a, had a really good, uh, uh, nice run there at Arizona State. Matter of fact, I think he might have been a, a world amateur number one. I think. I have to check that out. But he's really starting to play well, as we know. Great start to the season. Sixth at Farmers. Third at Amex. Uh, also ninth uh, at um, uh, Pebble Beach. Uh, missed the cut here last year. Missed the cut last week. But we are getting 90 to 1. And that's yep. a big number. And again, the kid's talented. So sort of like Gim, I think this week you have two guys that you're going to be hearing a lot of in the future, and we're both picking them this week, Gim and Kevin Yu. So keep an eye on these guys. And then Sam Ryder's the other one. He's trending in the right direction, back-to-back top 25s, 19th last year. And I think this uh, this, this is just M.O. all the way with a player like Sam Ryder to contend this week. Yeah, playing well um, on, you know, 21st and 16th at the two Florida courses he's played at. And I, I kind of like leaning into that Florida form. I didn't think a lot of these courses are similar. This one's different because it's more, you know, tight and, and tree line, but I still think there's, you know, plenty of crossover where guys that have played well the past few weeks um, should have a chance to play well here. Okay. Now uh, let's uh, scroll on down because we're starting to get to some really big long shots, uh, but uh, we still have a few others. Matter of fact, um, as far as our picks are concerned, uh, you have one more player, and I have two more players. So let's uh, talk about those players, and we're going to start, first of all, with uh, my two. I- I'm going back with Novak again, uh, <laughs> and he's 110 to 1, and, and Matty Schmidt is 150 to 1, and I'm going with him. Nice. Jan Menson met Matty Schmidt last year when we did yeah. our preview show. Talked yep. about several uh, players that uh, rookies or, or, or young players to keep an eye on. And so I always had that in mind, but it was interesting because I think she mentioned three players. That was one of them. And that was one of the three that was, wasn't doing anything. But then all of a sudden, at the end of last year, Maddie Schmid started uh, to get something going. And that's when I started to pay attention because he, it, it, when he ended the year in his last seven events with five top 30s, three top fives, and a runner-up. And that was split between the DP Tour and the PGA Tour. Um, and then all of a sudden, in the last two events, 10th, and then last week, uh, he got off to a really good start uh, mm-hmm. right there at the top of the leaderboard. Uh, and but you know ended up finishing 26th. So you could tell that this kid's got talent and he's starting to figure it out this year. He hasn't again end of last year. It's a, it's it's the fall. You're not go, going up against the top players. So you knew it was going to take him a little bit more time when he's playing with the big boys now. But he's yeah. now he's back to a field that he could manage uh, coming off uh, a couple of really good weeks. So I would think Schmid might be a very interesting play this week. Again, I think he fits yeah. the mo because he's never won before and he's 129th in the world. Yeah, and, and 150 to one. I mean, I'm a little surprised he's that high in odds after he was, you know, I think he was in the thir- third to last group over the weekend at the players. Like, you, you know, he was in the mix there for a while. So it se- seems like a good dice roll. And then uh, your player. Uh, in this Way down one, the board. Yes, uh, is <laughs> 250 to one shot. Speaking of putting, 250 to one shot. <laughs> Johnny Vegas. You're, it's yeah. always you can always count on Jared uh, every five weeks or so to throw in Johnny Vegas. So, I mean, I I can't let DraftKings get away with making 250 Johnny to one. 150 to one. I mean, 150 to one. I could have I could have passed them up. 250. Disrespectful. Yeah, the, the putting is horrible. That's a concern. But you know, he, so he you know he was 22nd at waste management, which was kind of what caught my attention, you know, maybe because he had, he had a bunch of injury issues last year. Um, so waste management kind of looked like he was healthy again, even in Mexico. when I, I bet him in Mexico, super disappointing. He finished 60th. He still gained 3.4 strokes on approach, which is, you know, a pretty, it was, you know, top 20 in, in the field that week. Again, the, the putting was poor. The driving was poor that week, that week, but you can usually count on Vegas to gain strokes off the tee really comes down to the putter. If he can just have like a decent week on the greens. And th- this is, you know, these tougher golf courses, where you don't need to make a ton of birdies that those type of events tend to favor the bad putters because you can get away with just, you know, hitting fairway, hitting green, miss a 15 foot birdie putt, but you know, par is still a good score. Um, So it's, you know, these type of tougher golf courses. I like these, you know, really bad putters and Vegas is a really bad putter. 
Um, but I, but I like them on these these type of uh, these type of courses, these type of, of events. Uh, it's it's definitely a gamble, no question about it. But two hundred fifty to one, two hundred fifty to one. <laughs> you put a buck, uh, yeah. and you can't go wrong. So uh, definitely like that. Okay, and um, as far as uh, the other long shots, anybody else? Because we, we've talked, a, I mean, this is long shot week. I mean, one of the guys that just did not make my list as a long shot, almost did, was Matt Wallace. Um, now, Matt has a win recently last year, um, and uh, he's played here twice. He was seventh last year. So Matt Wallace was somebody that, uh, that mm-hmm. was close to making my list. But other than that, because I have so many long shots, there really wasn't anyone else that I didn't uh, put in. I think I pretty much uh, have all the long shots, at least for me. What about you? The only other one I considered betting was Matthew Naismith, um, who was, again, fourth in our course history here over the last five years and coming off a pretty nice week at players. Um, 26 at the players, gained 3.3 strokes off the tee, gained two strokes on approach, actually lost a tad putting but still came 26. Now, he wasn't very good for a while leading up to that, but you know, maybe he um, maybe he found something last week. And again, he's had plenty of success at this course. Who, oh, you know, Aaron Wise is playing this week. I saw that. He, I mean, I don't know what happened to that guy. He, he's just he's been he's been hor- he's been horrible. It's amazing. It's golf, yeah. but he just has so. to get going. You know, yep. maybe this. Yeah, is I would good. love to see some signs of life. If I see signs of life, I'd, I'd hop back on it. But there's been no signs of life uh, anytime recently. Uh, let's see. Anybody else's names that stick out? Your uh, one of your long shots uh, picks this year that you said that you think uh, might have another win in him because uh, he already has one PGA Tour win uh, is Garrett Higo. I'm surprised that you know because I don't think we expected Higo to get a win so quickly. We mm-hmm. knew this kid was very talented, but. You figured, all right, like any other young kid that comes over from Europe, it's going to take him a little while. Then, boom, gets a win. You're, okay, well, maybe things are going to go really well for him. And then it just hasn't. So he's a talented kid, but there's uh, – I'm not sure what specifically is holding him back. But um, whatever it, whatever it is, once he kind of fixes it, he's going to be somebody that, you know, might uh, might might be a name that we're going to be needing to, you know, keep an eye on. Yeah, I, I still think so. You know, I'm just look, looking at his, his stats, and stats-wise, what's holding him back is the iron play. He's just been negative on approach for a while. Okay. Until last time out at Cognizant, where he came 16th, he gained 5.5 strokes on approach. Um, so that, you know, that that's interesting. He's, he's, a, he's an excellent putter. He's pretty good off the tee. It's the approach play that's been holding him back if, if he found something um, at the Cognizant. You know, what is it? What is his uh, number this week? What are his odds? Uh, oh, it's a big number. Uh, <laughs> he is two hundred to one. The last time I checked. Yeah, that, that's. I actually hadn't looked at him this week. That that I might um, might might toss a few bucks on Higo if he's two hundred to one. Yeah, that's pretty big. Uh, but you know, it's he hasn't shown again. I think he's only played twice, I believe, this year. So he hasn't played um, much. That's the problem. So look, it it, it, it 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 must be an injury. I'll have to find out. I'll no. ask Jan. Well, no, he. I mean, he's he's play, he played Sony, American Express, Farmers, Phoenix. Oh, he has. Uh, yeah, he's played. Uh, so he's missed the cuts all, all in all of them. Just, you, yeah, yeah, he's missed the cut in two and came no better than 49th in the other um, three. But again, 16th last time out at Cognizant with a strong approach play. Like again, at 200 to one, you're just gambling that maybe this guy figured something out with the irons and if he did then you know everything else has kind of been good enough where he, he could compete uh wait, wait a second what, what what wait what did you you said that he i don't i don't i don't have him anywhere except puerto rico i have him i'm looking at fantasy national i have him 80th at sony open this is 20, yeah 2024 yeah miscut american express miscut farmers 49th at waste management 60th in mexico let me see here. Uh, you sure that wasn't what? What were those numbers again? I have him. You said what was he at Phoenix? Um, 49th. Yeah, I don't. That's weird. I don't. Yeah, I'm, where, where are you? Where are you? Oh, looking? I'm at the uh, World Golf Rankings. Oh no, see, I'm on. I'm on. I'm on PGATour.com, and it has the same results I'm looking at. Because I haven't even heard of him myself it's not like i 
this it, it makes more sense that he has only played once because I haven't heard at all anything from him. Nothing. We're talking Garrett Higgo still, right? Oh, you're talking Higgo. I'm, th- I'm talking about Aaron Wise. Okay. <laughs> oh, there we yeah, go. Yeah. Okay, we're completely screwed up there. Yeah, because yeah, I was I was mm-hmm. asking about Wise whether or not uh, he's yeah, he's yeah. injured because yeah. of the fact because I remember because he 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 missed like half the year. Yes. So it, I, I'm he, sure it's an injury, and I'll ask yep. I'll ask Jan um, if she can update that for us um, and find out. But yeah, that's because uh, yep. uh, um, he what what. What happened was towards the end of well, beginning of last year, uh, things just started to fall apart right mm-hmm. in the beginning of the year. Like yep. he, once he got into the American Express, it just went all of a sudden. He only made like three out of twelve cuts, and then yep. he finally gave it up after the U.S. Open. So something yeah. something went wrong. So. Yeah, it was it was um, and, I, and I remember this now. I'm just I'm reading an article about it. It was it was a mental health thing. Oh, he really? Away. Okay. He stepped away. Um, actually, he withdrew from the Masters, and he 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 hasn't played since. Is that right? Uh, the U.S. Was... Open. Okay. Yeah. But he yeah, but uh, was... let's see, Masters. Do I have the Masters here mm-hmm. last year? Uh, it was probably the U.S. Open because he didn't play the Masters yeah. last year. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, because that was his last yeah. event. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, glad he's back. He'll be someone I'm watching closely this week. Yeah, because uh, overall, uh, he had gotten all the way to 33rd in the world uh, mm-hmm. at the end of 2022. Yeah. So that that's a, that's a significant player, and uh, but hopefully he'll be back. Okay, so we've got Texas the next two weeks, Houston and the Texas Open. Uh, Anything quick on those golf courses that you're familiar with? No, not off the top of my head. Okay. I don't think they're not very memorable. Courses, <laughs> no, they're honestly. not. I know, as soon as as soon as the players ends, I'm I'm looking forward to the Masters at this point. Yeah, it's it's uh, and then the thing like you said with Scheffler, his odds are so low, and um, yeah. but he will play one event before the Masters, and who knows what he's going to do there because nobody's going to take him in one and done the next time he plays. Because if you haven't taken him already, you're definitely holding him off for another signature event or a major. Yeah. But remember what Jan said, though. The Masters, this is going to be important. His wife could be giving birth. Cl- <laughs> I mean, she's, she's she's supposed to give birth close to the Masters. So I think it's supposed to be yeah. after. But if something happens before then you never know so keep that in mind that's and he's you, you would think that's going to be on his mind so that's why yeah. it was important we said it last week that if you're going to mm-hmm. take him l- last week was a good week to take him because you don't know what's going to be on his mind at the masters and you also don't know what's going to be on his mind once the kid's born yeah i mean the tough thing with Schaffler, if you haven't used him in one and done yet is he's now won four million dollars at api and four and a half million at players like you're just behind the eight ball even if he wins the masters it's only like 3.1 or 3.2 i think so not saying you're screwed if you haven't used scheffler these last two weeks but you're you know you're kind of kind of behind behind the eight ball on, on him at least yeah you're gonna have to uh, make sure that when you do pick him again he has to win that's that's yes. for sure but you you're just not taking him at texas there's just no yeah. reason to do that mm-hmm. um but uh yeah, he'll be a heavy favorite. Okay, so that's going to wrap it up. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll, 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 not sure exactly what's coming up as far as video from Janet the Valspar, but she will be taking a lot of video this week. We're just going to work on that to just try to figure out a really cool way to get as much video whenever Jan is out there. Matter of fact, she's going to be at two majors on the women's side. She's, as we said, she's going to be at Augusta. I believe she's going to be already. She's, uh, where's the U.S. Open, the men's U.S. Open this year? Nope. The U.S. Open is New York? Uh, no. U.S. Open is Pinehurst, right? Oh, okay. So or, it, or it's it's either Pinehurst or Valhalla. Like I keep getting that in PGA Championship, uh, you know, flip flop. Yeah. Well, the, the yeah. Well, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, Valhalla is uh, PGA, I believe. So that's right. um, yeah. So she's gonna be there. So <clears> the f- fact is, is you know, what's cool is, is once she's out there because she's a a, a World Golf Hall of Famer. She's just, you know, she can be cocky when she's there and she could be like, hey, you know, uh, I got a credential, you know, I want to go here, I want to go there. And they're going to be accommodating. So it's just a matter of how we can take advantage of that on the channel. And we're going to try to do that as best as we can. 
Uh, so I think it, things are going to get really cool here. And as far as football, of course, uh, Jared with the draft uh, draft sharks, um, we have to do our, our our draft. The NFL draft is next month, and then we're going to have our fantasy draft. What, like a month after that, or something like that? Yeah, you know, well, I'm the commissioner, so I can schedule yes. it whenever I want. I guess, but yeah, it'll be it'll be sometime <laughs> shortly after the NFL draft. Yeah, and it's going to be yeah. big for you because uh, you you had one of those years where everything was about uh, the draft and uh, building it for next year. So um, this is going to be a big. Do you have any additional picks? I I don't think so. I don't know. I'm in a few dynasty leagues, so it's all yeah. Well, there weren't that many trades in our league. Uh, yeah, not, not so far. Yep. You know. Did you get you get the first pick? I got the one on one. So I guess uh, you've got the yeah. Chicago Bears quarterback. So. Maybe, or I could, or I could trade the pick. We'll see. Oh, okay, very nice. We'll see. I wanna, I wanna get. Uh, I mean, I'm not gonna be able to, but I'd like to be able to get uh, Jaden Daniels. Yeah, trade, trade up. Yeah, well. <laughs> Thing. Yeah, we, we have all our uh, – we're pumping out all of our rookie content on Draft Sharks right now. Those are all free articles. We do you know, in-depth profile. So, Caleb Williams is up there. Daniels is not up yet. He'll be up soon. I just did Malik Neighbors. Uh, that hit the site today. So, if you're in uh, – really, if you're in any type of fantasy league, even if you're not playing Dynasty, you need to know about these rookies. So, yep. um, that's, that's, that stuff's all up on Draft Sharks, and it's all free. Oh, great time to be a sports fan, that's for sure. These are the best months of the year. Yeah. Uh, outside of football season, of course, because uh, not a lot goes on during the summer, like the dead of the summer when you have uh, mostly just baseball. But right now it's a really good time. So Masters will be here before you know it, everybody. It will be here to talk about it. So uh, for Jan Stevenson, uh, for Jared Small, I'm Greg DePama. We will be seeing you again next week.